Hello and welcome to this online service of worship on this Ash Wednesday. I am Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and on behalf of Rev. Margaret Ann Jessup and all the people who are helping to lead us in worship this night, I welcome you. It is such an honor to have this time to worship with you on this special night as we begin the season of Lent. I want to encourage you to use our contact form. It is pinned in the comment section. This is a wonderful way uh, that we'll be able to connect with you. So please use that contact form and fill out the information there. There's also a place there for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form this evening so that we can connect with you in worship and in small groups and in service in all kinds of different ways with the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Now, during this worship service, there are a few items that you'll need to have with you, if at all possible, uh, to help you fully engage in this worship service. One of those um, you may have been able to find in our Lenten Activity Kit, if you were able to pick up one of those today. If you weren't, we'll be able to pick up these Lenten Activity Kits again this Saturday from 10 to 12, so do not fear. But in that activity kit is a little baggie that says sand for Ash Wednesday. So if you have your activity kit, you want to make sure to have your sand. If you don't have that activity kit, find some sand or a little bit of dirt uh, that you can put into a small bowl. I have mine in a cup right here, but into a small vessel. You'll also want a little bit of water that we'll be able to use and then a candle that you can light. So a bowl with a little bit of sand or dirt in it. Um, a little bit of water, and a candle that you'll be able to light for later on in our ritual during this service. Now, when we do gather for online worship, we do covenant together to be a blessing and to participate. And by participating, we encourage everyone to participate fully in what's going on in the worship service. So pray and sing and do all of the things that we're doing together. And then we covenant to be a blessing, that the way we're together in the comments, the way we're together with people in our households, with the entire community, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. I now invite you to center yourself as we cross the threshold into this time of worship. Wednesday is a time of naming brokenness. As we enter the season of Lent, we commit to enter also in a season of healing and recovery. This requires us to name what has been shattered as a first step. As people who love and follow Jesus, we join with him and one another in being the body of Christ a body of those who need healing and who bring healing in our world. Jesus promises that he is with us in our weariness and our burdens.
During this season of Lent, we will explore and live with stories of Jesus' healing found in the Gospel of Matthew. We will see how Jesus encouraged people to open up about their lives as part of the healing process, no matter how broken. Ash Wednesday developed as a doorway to Lent, a time to speak the truth of our lives, a time to lay our brokenness before God. Please join with me in our time of confession prayer. Merciful God, we have lived a year of Lent. In the midst of it all, we have seen love and possibility shine through at times. But as we look back, it also feels like a year of broken dreams and shattered peace. We feel discouraged. Even though so much feels out of our control, we also see the ways our own faults and failures to love each other fully, to care for the least, to honor your creation, to stand for what is right and good. How our own actions and failings have contributed to the shattering. And so we come to you in pieces, fragments, broken shells of our past selves. As we walk along the shores of uncertainty and pain, we ask that you meet us here. Help us, healer. Show us your strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In these moments of silence, we offer you our brokenness and our yearning for wholeness. Throughout the season of Lent, we will contemplate the symbol of broken glass, sea or beach glass to be more specific. An unknown author has said this about the glass fragments that are collected on various shores. Ordinary pieces of tableware or beer or soda bottles are flung into the ocean. Years pass, or decades, and, and then one day there it is, on the shore, a small shard on one of those long discarded objects. Shifting currents have rounded its edges, abrasion has polished its surface, exposure to the sun has altered its hue. And so it is when you happen upon it. Here, amidst the shells and seaweed, we can't help but laugh with joy at what uh, seems a miracle. This ordinary fragment of silica that time and adversity have transformed into uh, something beautiful. Time and adversity making something beautiful out of that which was once seen as ordinary and broken. Now it's considered a transformed and precious piece. This is the journey we undertake. Jesus attended to those considered ordinary, broken, even deemed unworthy. No matter what, remember always that Jesus is the lover of our souls. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. In this moment, 
we begin the healing streams, allowing those to flow over us and around us. Let us share with one another that healing love and peace of Jesus Christ. You can say peace be with you and respond and also with you, with me, with people in the comment section, with those you may be joining together with in worship right now. Peace be with you. Good evening. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I'm the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and good friend of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. The scripture reading I will be reading now is from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The scripture that Margaret Ann has shared with us for this Ash Wednesday is one of the most beautiful invitations in all of scripture. It serves as an introduction in the Gospel of Matthew to Jesus as healer, Jesus as the one who brings restoration, Jesus as the one who breaks down barriers and connects people one with each other, with God, and with all of creation. In this proclamation of Jesus, he calls us on a journey of compassion, confession, and healing, particularly during these 40 days of Lent that we begin today on Ash Wednesday. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary. Come to me, all you who carry heavy burdens. Isn't that everyone, all people? Are you not weary? Do you not feel that you are carrying heavy burdens right now? Then Jesus invites you to come. And to not just come to Jesus, but to receive rest. That rest that Jesus gives us, the presence of God, the very presence of Jesus with us. Yes, when we love and follow Jesus on this journey, there will be burdens. But by loving and following Jesus, Jesus makes those burdens light. Because Jesus carries them with us. Jesus also invites us to learn from him. During this Lent, as we explore a season of recovery, we will learn about healing from Jesus. And we will learn to go and do likewise, to continue the work of healing on his behalf. We will discover that healing is about much more than simply the cure of physical diseases. Our physical health is intimately intertwined with social, communal, moral, ecological, holistic health. This is what real recovery looks like, and so we will learn from Jesus. And Jesus invites us to take his yoke on us. The image of a yoke that Jesus uses is that wooden cross piece that's fastened over the neck of two animals so that they can easily pull together the cart or the plow or whatever it is that they need to pull together. So as we journey together with Jesus in this season of recovery, we will also explore and name what yoke is right for each of us. What yoke is right for us as a church family together, yoked with Jesus. An easy yoke is one that is well fitted, making the carrying of difficult things ergonomically easy. So as we take Jesus' yoke upon us and learn from him, we seek to discover what ministries of healing we are called to engage in with the ease and therefore with the passion and the vigor that makes a difference in our community and in our world. Come to me, Jesus says. Receive rest for your souls. Take my yoke. Learn from me. Be healed by me. Go and heal in my name. 
Let this journey of recovery be yours and mine and all of ours during these holy weeks together. Amen. As we come together in this time of prayer, I want to remind you that you can share your prayers with us at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We love to pray with you. You can put prayers into the comment section. You can also use that contact form. There's a place there for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. Please join with me in prayer. Merciful God, lover of our souls, you who weeps, bleeds, cries, waits for us and because of us. We come to you to make the longings of our hearts known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, allowing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. We pray for those who are shattered by the violence of circumstances tumbled by the forces of life and washed up on shores distant from all that feels whole. We pray for our community and our city that all may be connected and reconnected through your equity and justice. We pray for all who are weary and heavy laden. We pray for ourselves. All of these prayers we offer in the name of our healer, your son, Jesus Christ, and pray as he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We've come to the part of our service, our ritual of earth, fire, air, and water for Ash Wednesday. And if you have not already done so, I encourage you to bring a candle, um, your bowl of uh, dirt or sand, whatever it is that you have, and a little bit of water close by as we participate in this very special ritual together. Ash Wednesday, as the beginning of Lent, developed in the 5th through the 6th centuries and was mandated in the 11th century. Although Protestants did not maintain this ritual for the most part, it has come back to us in the 20th century worship renewal movement as an important time of reflection in which we have reclaimed this symbol and the ritual of our spiritual ancestors. It plays an important role in helping us make meaning in the brokenness of our lives. This year, we are indeed aware of the fragility of life. Even though we cannot share ashes the ways that we have become accustomed, we can share the ritual that draws us close to the elements of creation, earth, fire, air, and water, reminding us that we are part of creation in all its beauty and its brokenness. Sand, which we've seen in our worship pictures with our beach glass, is the origins of glass making. Glass is liquefied, heated sand. In a way, the shards of beach glass are the epitome of dust to dust, or in this case, sand to liquefied sand. To make, take it back even further, Further, sand or dirt is created by the erosion of mountains and rocks over thousands of millions of years. So whether you have on hand today is dirt or sand, we are witnessing the brokenness and erosion and weathering of the earth itself. All things become broken. All things transform. And every form we take is holy, whole, and beautiful. I invite you to touch the sand or the dirt that you have with you in this moment. Feel its grains, its decomposed nature. Let us pray. Holy Creator God, as we feel this elemental part of who we are, we remember that we ourselves were made from the dust of the earth. To experience brokenness is the way of creation. It is not something to be ashamed of. It is the order of things. Transform us, O oh God. Help us recover the beauty of who we are and see the goodness in transformation. Amen. Fire. Glass can only be created when the sand is met with the heat of fire. No wonder the scriptures and poets throughout the ages have spoken of a refining fire. The heat of fire is always destructive, but with intention and care intending what transpires from the destruction of fire can be a new form with purposes that are good, useful, and beautiful. I invite you to light your candle if it is not already lit. Gaze upon the colors of the flame, which may be white or gold or red or blue. Let us pray. Holy refining fire of the spirit, as we feel this element part of who we are, we remember that you invite us to fuel the flames of passionate love for you and for each other. Do not allow the flames of our spirit to lie dormant, Offer us your light and life. Transform us, O oh God. Help us recover the beauty of who we are and see the goodness in transformation. Amen. Next is air. The scriptures depict the creation of human beings as having holy breath blown to 
illuminate our being. Glass vessels gained a new technique around the time of Jesus. The first century BCE, glass blowing was invented, offering a way for molten glass to be shaped by blowing through a tube, creating an air bubble, a glass vessel, ready for practical and artistic purposes. Breath is part of the creation of our holy vessels. Breath is with us in our very first cry and will be the final song as we exit this life. I invite you now to close your eyes, if this is comfortable for you, and become aware of your breath. Let us pray. Holy giver of breath and life, as we fill this elemental part of who we are, we remember that this ongoing, life-giving, usually automatic moment-to-moment -moment act of breathing can be an act of gratitude for our very origin. Breathing is the core of our relationship with creation, sharing and existing within this atmosphere. Just as our breath offers us the opportunities to let go of that which we do not need in order to take in fresh air that we do need. Transform us, O oh God. Help us to recover the beauty of who we are and see the goodness in transformation. Amen. Water. As the water meets the sand and earth at the shoreline, we also are invited to a journey of meeting the living water that Christ offers us. Ancient peoples made wet soil in many forms as healing balms. Skin moistened, blood flow increased to the area, muscles relaxed. This still is practiced today in many places. Our Lenten journey about healing then gives us an opportunity to use this as our Ash Wednesday ritual of anointing. I invite you to take the water that you have brought and Mix it with the dirt or the sand that you have and create a wet mixture. And then after you've done that, I invite you to take some of that uh, mixture and gently rub it into your palm. Make the sign of the cross. You could do it on the back of your hand. Let us pray. Healing presence. As we feel this elemental part of who you are, we remember you created us, shaped us from the dust in the palm of your hand. Someday we will return to dust, return to the palm of your hand, once again, held and loved forever. We lament in this moment, the grittiness of life, the need for healing, the difficult and necessary process of transformation. Mark us as your own, remold us again and again as your people. Let the recognition of our own need break us open yet again for the sake of others, for the sake of the world. Amen. Dash your foot against a 
Thank you for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in this worship service on this Ash Wednesday. I pray that this has been an excellent start to this season of Lent and that you will continue to join with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in online worship. Those services online are on Sundays at 1030. We also have an opportunity during the season of Lent for in-person contemplative communion at 815 a.m. in the sanctuary of Douglas Avenue. You do need to pre-register for that service and you can do that following the link on our web page and also by calling our church office. I want to encourage you again, if you have not done so already, to pick up your Lenten activity kit. We'll have pickups in the back parking lot of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church this Saturday, February 20th from 10 a.m. to noon. And I also want to encourage you to use that contact form. There's a place there for your prayer requests. Let us uh, be on this Lenten journey of healing and recovery with you during this season of Lent. So use that contact form. And now, as you go into this evening, go with the confidence that though shattered, we are healed and held. Begin the journey of recovering your depth of love for all and your joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I will give you rest. And may the Spirit deliver salve to your soul and power to your living. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Thank you.